Around 150 years ago, when little Rizzo was born, his father had just passed away due to an illness and his young mother, Nushafarin, had no support in Savatku, where Rizzo's father was born. Rizzo's paternal family was never kind to Nushafarin and even deprived him and Rizzo of his father, Abbas Alikhone Dodosh Beg's inheritance. Rizzo had three stepsisters which were much older than him. One of them, Nabot Khanum, was a kind woman who loved little Rizzo. She sheltered Nusha Fatin, her little baby, and her teenage brother, Hussein Khan, who was assigned by Abbas Ali Khan to protect Nusha Fatin in his house. At that time of the year, it was a cold winter in Olasht and the roads were closed due to snow. Nabot Khanum waited until the condition of the roads improved a little. It was the start of spring and Reza was 40 days old. Nabot Khanum found a safe caravan and entrusted Reza, her mother and uncle, to that caravan to take her to Tehran and her family and brothers. The caravan set off. The weather was cold and the road was difficult. When they reached the pass of Imam Zadeh Hashim, the convoy was caught in a blizzard. The men of the caravan were busy opening the road for about five hours. At the top of the pass, there was a tea house where the caravan went to eat and rest a little. Nusha Farin, who was worried about his little baby, tried to breastfeed him, but the little baby neither moved nor cried. His body was bruised as if he was the dead. The screams and cries of Nusha Farin attracted everyone's attention. Everyone tried to comfort and calm her down, but the heart of the young mother could not rest. The convoy had to continue on its way. The fellow travelers convinced Nusha Farin to leave the child's body to the tea house's owner so that whenever the weather is favorable, he can bury it next to the Imam Zadeh. The caravan started to move, but the poor woman was still worried about her child. They had not gone far when Nusha Farin regretted and decided to return. With her insistence, the convoy returned to the tea house to take the baby's body back to Tehran. When they returned to the tea house, the old man with white hair was sitting on the chair and drinking tea. Seeing the state of Nusha Farin and understanding the story, he asked her, My girl, will you let me see your child? Maybe I can do something for him. Nusha Farin, who was disappointed that Reza was alive, heard this as if a glimmer of hope shone inside her chest. She gave the child to the old man. The old man, as if he had a mountain of knowledge and experience on his shoulders, began to rub the child's hands and feet. A few minutes passed and the baby, who had warmed up little by little, started crying. Nusha Farin, whose happiness was indescribable, hugged the child and kissed him. She was crying tears of joy and people were surrounding her. After a while, she came back to thank the old man, who was his child's saving angel, and to ask his name. But there was no trace of that kind old man, as if he was the same angel who only came to complete his mission and return. Forty years passed, and Reza became a worldly parlor general, Sepah Solor, and then the king and father of Iran. During his only 16-year old reign, he turned Iran into one of the advanced countries of his time. He always said that I survived to build Iran. Reza Shah Ruhat Shad